sports fans, welcome to the broadcast booth. I'm Jason Aaron Goldberg, and this is Card Collecting Shenanigans. While you're here, hope you'll subscribe. It's Saturday of Heritage Week, and it's time for Booth Blab. I'm very appreciative of the positive feedback that the Booth Blab on the Series 1 Hobby Box received, so I'm going to try to make it a regular uh, program on the channel when I do things like break a Hobby Box, because... Uh, folks have chimed in and they say it was very beneficial to just sort of hear the pros and cons of a hobby box purchase over purchasing more retail-oriented products. Now, before I get into the thick of it, I want to point people to Mike, baseball collector. He had a great episode where he showcased two super cool Dick Perez books full of Hall of Famer autographs. He gave me a little shout out in there, uh, but it's just a stunning, stunning collection of Dick Perez artistry. Uh, and if you've checked the channel homepage, I'm still running the giveaway of Dick Perez artist autograph Diamond Kings cards. There's more of those to give away. So check that out if you like. Uh, I will also be sending out random uh, autographs to fab subscribers and folks that engage on the channel. Uh, but I encourage you to check out Mike's video. It was awesome. Uh, also, I am planning ripping live tomorrow afternoon. That's Sunday at some point. So hit the bell or something to uh, be signaled if I go live. Uh, I haven't quite figured out the time yet. Uh, okay, so Booth Blab here as we cover, is it good to buy a hobby box or should you stick to retail? Now, I personally am kind of more of a retail guy because I love the $20 blaster box price point, but I saved my pennies and I was trying to buy a few more hobby boxes this year because of the like, quote unquote guaranteed hits. But my hobby boxes have been less than stellar, let's say. But there are pros and cons to everything. So I'm just gonna kind of swing it around the diamond here and uh, we'll cover some stuff. So first thing, the hit, quote unquote hit. This was my hit. And to me, it's bunk. Some folks call this a napkin relic. I've heard other uh, terms for it, uh, which I'll try to not repeat because it's a kind of a kid-friendly show here. Um, this shouldn't be your hit in a hobby box, in my opinion. If you check the checklists and you see there's so many subsets and inserts that are hobby only, so if you're going to spend the $90 to $115 on a hobby box, you should get a guaranteed hobby box hit. This is a, a hit you're going to find in a blaster retail pack. It's just kind of generic. It has, it's not numbered. There's absolutely nothing special about it. If you watch the hobby box break, I flung this card because I really did not care. I was very disappointed that this is the hit, and it was similar to my hit in the Series 1 hobby box, which was a manufactured patch relic. Again, that's A, not a relic, and B, something you should get in a blaster. It should not be a hobby box uh, hit because just in terms of price point, Okay, so I paid $90 for my hobby box. That's because I pre-ordered it. I know that they're a little bit more now, uh, depending where you buy from. But for that price, let's say if I included tax and I rounded up to 100 I could get five blaster boxes for that price. Actually, even a little less if you're using some of the great eBay stores. And you would get, you know, almost 40 or more than 40 packs. That's a lot of cards compared to the 24 packs you get in a hobby box. So value-wise, which is better? I'm going to lean blaster uh, just in terms of the sheer volume of cards you're going to get. And if you're, if you're looking at it hit-wise, this is not worth it. And this was the one chrome card I pulled in my entire hobby box. Now, as a Yankee fan, that's great. It is a Yankee, but... On a visual uh, standpoint, it's not a stunning chrome card. It's just too much gray, in my opinion. There's no color here. Uh, it's not a rainbow refractor. It's just a chrome card, and it's one of the lesser chromes out of 999. Uh, so again, disappointing for me, even though I guess maybe I should look at it as it's a short print chrome card. Uh, at least I think so, because it's in the 400s. Uh, but I have to check that or double check it. Um, but, you know, 
in blasters, you could pull a hot box and get, you know, every pack with a purple chrome refractor. And speaking of that, I do have a purple chrome refractor on the way that I'll show off in the future. I'm sure you can guess who it might be of. Uh, but, uh, all right, so moving on again, the box topper in a hobby box. You can either get one of these or you can get one of these supers that you see back here of the Mel Stottlemyre. Uh, that's from an actual 1970 super. Uh, and I got one of these. Now, it's cool if you're going to get a Hall of Famer. I did see someone who did a case break. They got a Carl Yastrzemski. That's pretty sweet. Um, but this... Now, I'm sending this to a Twins fan because I believe he's going to appreciate it a lot more. And it's rookies. and it's, I mean, it's a cool little piece. But in terms of a box topper, this is nothing more than a Rediscover Tops buyback. And I just don't think for the money, this is a quality box topper. It should be something manufactured special for the box. And these were one in three. It's really, there's not anything rare about it. Uh, but if it was a Hall of Famer, I would probably have a different opinion. Uh, okay, now moving into, I'm not going to show much base or really any base uh, because you're all out there buying it and you're going to get a lot of base cards. My base card stack was probably like the entire screen size. Um, and most of the stars are short prints. So here's the short prints that I pulled. Now, you're not going to get this many in a blaster, but if you bought five blasters, you probably are going to get this many. So these are all the short prints that I pulled, along with the Aaron Judge, which I is a sweet card. I mean, I'm glad I pulled a Judge, but um, it's just a high number. That's all. It's just a high number short print, not a variation or anything like that. Now, when I was going through the break, I discovered uh, afterwards that this was a variation. Uh, I didn't check the back. It was a long video. It was, you know, booze and baseball cards. So it was kicking back, enjoying the cocktails and just ripping packs, which is a lot of fun. Uh, and so I don't always check everything uh, like backup cards and all that. So as I went through, I checked the back and I discovered, oh, okay. And it's cool that in Heritage, they tell you, you know, what it is. It'll say error, uh, you know, action, it can, refractor, whatever. Um, so... This is, these cards are one in 41 packs. So not a super hard thing to pull. I suppose I should be excited that it is Juan Soto. Um, but, uh, you know, one in 41 is really not super duper rare. And it's the only variation card I pulled in the entire box. So again, value wise, are you going to get better stuff out of a bunch of blasters or fat packs? You might, and we're going to find out because as you can see, I got this fat pack chilling over here. At the end, I'm going to show you uh, or take my first look at a fat pack. I do have some blasters and fat packs of Heritage, so there will be a fat pack frenzy uh, and a couple blaster rips here in the future. Uh, so stay tuned for that, and we'll see how I like those. Now, here's the rookie. These are all the rookies that I pulled. That's a lot of rookies. That's a, a really you know substantial stack of all of these rookie cards. The troubling part is, unlike last year, most of these guys, you know, we collectors have not heard of. And even if you're not a collector, you're just a baseball fan. Like, I have not heard of really of almost any of these guys. I mean, Tuki Toussaint, I've heard of. Uh, I've heard of Loisaga. Chance Adams, I'm starting to hear about. But it's not like last year where it was like, Right out, out of the gate, everyone was like, okay, we got Otani, we got Glaber, we got Reese Hoskins, uh, uh, Acuna uh, Jr., Ozzy Albies. Oops, that meant to go there. You know, we got all these great rookies last year. It was just a stunning crop, and this year, I don't think we're going to have that. So, uh, while it's great to pull that many rookie cards, if the rookies don't really pop this year, I don't know how great it is. Uh, I enjoy these cards, so I want to show off all the ones I pulled. These are just a neat subset, and I got, you know, quite a few of them, which is cool, uh, but my favorite thing about them, actually, are the backs, because they all have a cool, like, cartoon, and actually, as I go here, I didn't check to see if any of these are short prints. It doesn't look like it, because they're all, it looks like just in the 300, 360s, kind of 350 through 360, but I just like that they all have a cool cartoon and, you know, a little piece of information on the back. Uh, that's the kind of stuff I love about Heritage. It makes them a lot of fun. 
Uh, all right, these I also am a big fan of. I would have loved to have pulled a chrome of one of these. I'm imagining that they do have these in chrome. It's not just base cards. I could be wrong though. Um, but they're very, you know, I love the colors. They're really vibrant. Uh, I love the font, even though, you know, it's 1970 and they're using like, it's a sixties font. Uh, you know, that kind of hippie thing, which is cool. A little psychedelic. I dig it. Um, and so they're just, you know, I think they're really sharp cards. I like them. Uh, I did order a Miggy, uh, so I'm going to get that one of him. Uh, and so I don't know how many you'd pull in a blaster. We'll find out. But I only pulled four in the entire hobby box. And Heritage has a lot of subsets. So I feel like I should have gotten a few more subset cards than what I did. Uh, these I also like, uh, mostly because of this border. I have a friend who is a designer. He, he designs for a lot of celebrity pop stars and stuff. And uh, he had this awesome, like it was a portrait kind of wall mount thing, but it was, it was fabric and it kind of had this cool design. And I took uh, some photos of models and stuff using it. And so it gives me a lot of positive memories. Uh, but aside from this, I don't think the cards themselves are particularly stunning. Um, I think that's the gray, really, that, you know, or silver. Some folks call it silver. And this is the only now and then that I pulled in the entire box. And I just noticed as I'm looking at this one that this is Reggie at Yankee Stadium. You got the facade in the background. I kind of love it when, when I see those, and it always takes me a, a look or two before I no really pay attention and notice the facade in the back. But, uh, you know, this is like a rookie... Pretty much Reggie Jackson had no idea he would soon be a Yankee legend. Uh, also did pull one scratch off. Uh, these are pretty cool, but it, you really need, if you're going to scratch them, I mean, it's a game that you play with other folks. And so if you're not, you know, a young kid and you're not pulling a bunch of these, I would just not scratch it. But if it, uh, like, like a Hawk and I were discussing some sort of game we could play amongst channels and how would we engage with each other, and what would the game be, this could be one. Uh, this is a good option, but we would need a lot of these to really make it work, and there, I only pulled one, so I think they're a marginally tough pull. Uh, so, and as a matter of fact, let's rip this fat pack, because, say it with me, believe in the fat pack. Uh, let's check the odds here and see if it'll tell us what a scratch off, uh, top scratch off one in 12. So, you know, that's not a tough pull, but you, that's, you'd have to open a lot to get enough to, to play. All right. I'm hoping for something fun. This is a target fat pack, uh, not Walmart. I do have two from Walmart. They come with a cloth insert. Target comes with these like candy things. But this year, or at least for the base, they both have 20 cards. Last year, uh, Walmart had 16 cards, I believe, and Target had 20. Uh, and tar uh, Walmart was a dollar more, I believe, or, or vice versa, maybe. But it was like, it was an interesting little thing I discovered that you got a couple more cards from one company, and it was a dollar more. Doesn't look like we got anything. No chrome, no inserts. And we'll go through and all, we'll see if maybe we got some short prints or a variation. We'll check the codes. Uh, was chatting with one fab subscriber who got a French back. Uh, haven't pulled one of those either. So I would say let's check the back, but that's kind of a, you know, that's a dud fat pack. Um, well, I'm going to look at the code here on the bottom, but we'll also have the 092092. I think they're all going to be 092. Oh, 112. That's just a short print. Okay. So Kershaw, so we pull one short print. I'll put them in the short print pile. Kind of hoping that was going to be a French back or something. And that's it. Just a, a, a regular short print, um, and I'm curious. I heard Kershaw right. He's supposed to be the opening day starter, but uh, he's having a little elbow issue. 
But uh, as always, check the description below for the link to the Clarice Goldberg Scholarship. Pledges get cards if you're building the set and you need the short prints. Uh, if you watched my 2018 Heritage set building update, you know, I'm very thankful to Fab subscriber Matt Spencer. He helped me out with a lot of short prints. Those are the toughest. Um, and so if you're building the set, I definitely can understand the frustration and challenge of trying to get all your short prints covered. Uh, I need 69 more cards. Fab subscriber Natalie Wu asked, how many cards do I still need for the 2018? And I counted it up, 69. Uh, so still a little ways to go. A lot of that is the 400 short prints. Uh, all right, so there you have it, folks. That's the booth blab for Saturday of Heritage Week. Leave a comment. Let me know what you thought, what you're thinking of Heritage, if you've pulled anything spectacular. Really appreciate you watching. Slam that like button. Make sure you're subscribed. Tell all your friends. And I'll see you next time in the broadcast booth.